Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Lord be Jesus and his disciples came from Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and, and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still, calling here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to Jesus, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. is to stand still and not move. I'm either not hearing what God is saying or I'm avoiding what he's saying directly to me. I, like you, at times become a very stubborn disciple. Especially when I think I know what the truth is. Every time that I perceive that I have the truth, the Holy Spirit shares with me very gently. And sometimes, succinctly, you don't have it all together yet. That hurts my feelings. I want to have it all together. But I can't. Because of my humanity. I am just a person. I'm just a person sanctified by water and the Holy Spirit to be empowered to be more than I ever thought that I could be. That empowering and that changing in me to make me into the man that God calls me to be is a lifetime process. No one ever arrives. <laughs> Now, we saw in the lessons last week with uh, John, James and John, do you think that they thought that they had arrived? Do you remember the lesson? They wanted to have a place at the left and the right side of Jesus when he takes the throne of David and overthrows the Roman oppressors. They thought that they really understood everything. And they decided because they had all the truth that they would then make the decisions, obviously, that were necessary for all the people because they had a corn on the truth. Jesus very gently puts them in their place. He's saying, 
That is not for me to decide. It is only for those whom it has been formerly by the Father determined. That's a very interesting statement. All of us are on a journey that many of us cannot predict. If we could predict it, maybe we would get ahead of some of it and change it before it hits us right in between the eyes. We are not fortune tellers and we are not called to be. The only thing that we are called to be empowered by God's Spirit is His servants. And servants listen to the words of the Master. And conform to the will of that Master. Who is your Master? Well, as we look at the world, we see many Masters. From the government, politics, wealth, pride, intellectual prowess. There's so many things that can separate us from God. But the power of the Holy Spirit in us makes it impossible for God to separate himself from us. Jesus and his disciples were coming out of Jericho. Jericho is an extremely interesting place. A place that would be very interesting if one would be a fly on the wall of Jericho and listen to the things that Jesus was saying and doing. All we have to do is look at scripture and we see what he was doing there in Jericho. He's now leaving Jericho with a crowd who are following him. Why would anyone follow him? Why would any of us follow him? We follow because we don't have all the answers yet. We are seeking the truth, not for the minute things of life, such as uh, subatomic particles, or a new understanding of biology, I'm talking about the inner depth of our being. What is it that we are searching for that makes it so difficult to refuse that following? I love Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was a blind beggar. What did him being blind signify to those around him? Any answer? Sin. He was unclean. And because he was unclean and obviously a sinner, or his parents were sinners, therefore that's why he is blind, then he becomes an invisible person. And when one is desperate, the cry becomes louder. In the city of Jericho, passed between Jericho and Jerusalem daily were priests and Levites. It's estimated at the time of Jesus' ministry that there were 20,000 priests in Jericho and another 20,000 Levites in Jericho to maintain the status quo of their orthodoxy. But yet a blind beggar can stand on the road and being ignored by those 20,000 priests going to and from Jerusalem to offer the sacrifices for themselves and for, and for the nation of Israel. But blinded to the suffering that is all around them. Bartimaeus, bar Timaeus, means he is the son of. Saying his name Bartimaeus is saying he's the son of Timaeus. 
which means that he was connected to other human beings. He wasn't invisible. He wasn't just a man that we may or may not have noticed day in, day out as we pass him on the street, as we go back and forth through our duties as priests in the temple or Levites or scribes or Pharisees or Sadducees. That man becomes invisible, but he was a person because he was the son of someone. Many times when I look at our culture today, as to look at those who are invisible. When we look at that person, we look at the outs outside appearances of them. Have you ever thought about the idea that that is someone's child? Jesus warns us about what we will not accomplish if we ignore these or the least of these, my brethren. What do you say? It is better that a millstone be wrapped around your neck and you be thrown into the depths of the sea than you ignore the least of these of my children. The priests were going about their task of being religious. But one would have to beg and ask the question, where was their mercy and where was their compassion? Was it more convenient to walk away than to actually see? Was it more convenient to ignore rather than sit to see in the eyes of the man who was blind? Bartimaeus wanted to see with all in his might the things that all of us take so much for granted. His entire life was one wrapped in darkness and he was wanting to see light. He wanted to be a total, complete, full human person and not invisible to the world in which he lived. <laughs> Obviously, he had heard about Jesus of Nazareth. Ask any person who is uh, blind or losing their sight, and they will tell you that their hearing becomes even more clearer. That the blindness of eyes opens up the hearing more intensely. <laughs> so he heard the conversations about this itinerant Nazarene preacher. So when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming through Jericho and he's on the side of the road, he thought he might get a glimpse of him. Now what was happening on the roads between Jericho and Jerusalem? Any time that a noted figure or prophet or preacher would come through. Unlike today, the roads were lined with people wanting to get a glimpse of this Jesus. Bartimaeus, on normal days, was sitting there beside the road, invisible to everyone. He could hear everything, and he would have immediate access to this Jesus of Nazareth. But on this day, because this celebrity was coming to town, everyone, out of their curiosity, not their need, their curiosity, lined the roads to see him rather than to hear Bartimaeus was not desperate. Bartimaeus was open to the possibility that he might receive his sight again. He yells out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on this is one of the first times in the Gospel of Mark and through the other Gospel recollections that we have that Jesus is called the Son of David. He called him the Son of David. Not the Son of Man, the Son of David. He is connecting Old Testament theology and history and understanding and attaching it to this Jesus. And if you were the son of David, you will take the throne of Israel and you will overthrow the oppressors. And we, once again, the nation of Israel, will become a 
significant power in the world. But that's not what Bartimaeus was saying. He knew that he was the son of David and that because he was the son of David that he possibly could have mercy on him. It says, many sternly ordered him to be quiet. Now, who might you think those persons were? Who surrounded Jesus? His disciples. Don't bother the teacher with your trivial needs. He would not give up. He cried out even more and louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Walking along that long road from Jericho to Jerusalem, which is about 15 miles in desolate territory, at two miles an hour, how long it's going to take you in that walk. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. He was on his way to Passover. He was on his way to the cross. He knew what God has called him to do, and he was willing to confess it at least three times in the Gospel of Matthew, and none of those who were listening, his intimate crowd did not yet understand. And probably didn't really understand who he was unless he was going to take the throne of David. Bartimaeus saw something in him beyond son of David. He says, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still. He stopped in his tracks with all of his entourage wondering what's going on. You can hear them mumbling to themselves, I wish that person would just shut up. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. Call him here. They call the blind man. This is very interesting. They changed their whole team. Because it was something that Jesus wanted, and they were in a position of leadership, they changed their mind. Rather than sternly telling him to shut up, all of a sudden they changed their whole attitude, and they say, take heart, get up. He's calling you. Well, what a change in attitude that was. Jesus indirectly scolded them for being blinded to what was in front of them. They were embarrassed. He said, oh, we didn't mean that. Come on, dude. This is an important phrase here in this gospel today. So throwing off his cloak. That was a security blanket, and that may have been his only possession. He was willing to lay it down and go to what was his greatest need. He becomes very vulnerable at that point. Throws off his cloak, and remember he's blind. And if you're blind and you lay down something, how are you going to find it in the midst of the crowds who are telling you to be quiet? Don't bother the master. He risked it. He threw off his cloak and he walked towards the voice of the Lord. In the midst of his blindness, he could see. Not with his eyes, but with his heart. And his heart brought him to the place of Jesus. Not only did he get up, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Jesus says to you and to me, what is it that you would have me do for you? We never ask that question. We never know that we can ask it. That we can respond to the question. 
what do you want me to do for you? What do you want the Lord Jesus to do for you, my friends? Each individual one. Well, I'm just not good enough to ask God for anything. We ain't going to listen to my prayers anyway. But God has a time. God is walking in a direction. And he will stop in his tracks to listen to you. At the time of your need. At your request. And if your heart is open, you will fulfill it. Bartimaeus was not an intellect of the time. He hold, held no position of authority within Judaism. He wasn't a priest or a Levite. He wasn't a, a Sadducee or a scribe or a Pharisee. No, he was just a human person, blinded from birth, sitting on the side of the road, living in darkness. He hears the word of light, and nothing's going to stop him from receiving that which God is now offering him. What do you want me to do for you, Bartimaeus? He said to Jesus, my teacher, let me see again. A very simple request. He calls him teacher, Rogumi. A man of God. A man who speaks for God is what a Rogumi is. He may not understand anything theologically about the significance of the incarnation or the resurrection. Only thing that he knew is that he had a need and he believed that this Jesus of Nazareth could give him what he asked for. He did not get into a theological or political discussion with Jesus. His need was so great that he put aside all of those worldly things and looked only at his immediate need. I am in darkness. I want to see light. Did Barmaeus have to jump through any catechism? Jesus says, go. Your faith. And as Mark always says, immediately he regains his sight. Now when we listen to the other acts of healing, when he healed the uh, uh, blind the blind man with spittle and clay, when he healed those as reported in the New Testament Gospels, they continued on their way. Bartimaeus does something different than those other miracle stories. The healing that he received, he regained his sight, he could see the light, and it says that he then began to follow Jesus. Not just to say, well, thanks a lot, appreciate it. That healing transformed the way he saw all of reality in life. And his own mindset about being a blind beggar sitting on the road begging for sustenance every single day of his life, he is now free from all those burdens and he is now able to follow the light. I can't imagine being blind. I know some people who are. I've never asked them what it would be in their greatest imagination if all of a sudden that blindness, even maybe from birth, all of a sudden it opened up the world with light. How would one respond to that? My feeling about that is, is I would be so overwhelmed by what I had not seen and now see that maybe even a glimpse of it is so powerful that I might even want to be blind because knowing so much now overwhelms me that it would have been better if I was in darkness. 
That's what I suspect is going to be like. Bartimaeus deceived for the first time. He can see the people around him who are ignoring him and seeing him as this transparent, thinking him as being unclean, unwilling or unable to even touch him as a human person. Now he sees and everything changes. And even people check, treat him differently. But he followed Jesus. He just didn't say, thanks. The healing of the body, mind, and spirit empowered him to do things that he never thought were possible for him to do again. I look on this scripture and it overwhelms me. Because I too have been a Bartimaeus. I've been blinded by the world, and blinded by success, and blinded by wealth, and blinded by prestige. Until I had to face my own death. I don't wish that on anyone, but to say that everyone will experience that. No one will escape that. Three years ago, when my doctors told me that I was terminal, I had most 18 months to live. And those 18 months would not be pleasant. Unless I received a liver transplant, I would be dead in 18 months at the most. That brought me out of darkness into light. Because as Bartimaeus, I was living in darkness to the immense depth of the truth of Jesus of Nazareth, the risen God. And knowing that my life was spared by his grace changed the way that I looked at everything. How I look at love, how I look at acceptance, how I look at my own personal salvation and how I look at love. I have replaced in my own life, like many of his disciples, John and James, wanting a position of authority and power, comparing that to Bartimaeus, that his needs were very simple. He was in darkness and he wanted light. Many of us spend our time, much of our lives in darkness, not with blindness of sight, but blindness of heart. We're not able to see until the realities of life hit you right in the face. I don't wish that upon anyone, but just to say, in the intensity of our need, we are not alone. There is no such thing as terminal in the eyes of God. It's only a place to grow, to see and understand him better, and see him in the way that he wishes us to see him, not in the way that we have designed in our own minds and heart to view him. Out of our own presuppositions, our own decisions about who is in and who is out? Who is unclean and who is clean? Who is acceptable and who is not? The answer to that question is, what do you want me to do for you? Has no strings. Baboonie, let me see it. In the name of the Father, the 
sorry. 